Okay, um, we're here again at the Slatington Library. I'm Ed Bechtel from Bechtel's Pharmacy, and we're doing our monthly sweet spot lecture. In December, we're going to talk about uh, navigating the holidays. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Good information for next year, then. <laughs> um, let's take a moment to review our sweet spot basic truths. Uh, most of us know there are two main types of diabetes. and Type 1 diabetes, your body... Um, makes little or no insulin and you have to take insulin from an outside source in order to live. Type 2 diabetes, your body makes insulin um, but doesn't use it properly, doesn't make enough insulin to take all the sugar out of your bloodstream. No matter which way you get, you get diabetes though, um, the complications from diabetes can be the same. And what should your blood sugar be? Um, Depending on whose guidelines you follow, your fasting blood sugar should be uh, either below, at or below 125 or at or below 130. Um, and your blood sugar after eating should be uh, no higher than 180. We control our blood sugar using the three-legged stool approach, um, diet, exercise, and medications. Um, two of those three uh, things are totally under your control and even the third one um, you know whether or not you take your medications the way they're prescribed the way they're needed um, that's under your control as well the holidays are here so are tempting candies and desserts that accompany this time of year you can't control the amount of goodies that surround you at work or at parties, but you can control what and how much you choose to eat. Diabetes doesn't take the holidays off, and neither can you from your management plan. Be patient. Take time to plan and analyze what's available. Choose wisely, then savor every bite. Focus on friends, family, and the festivities instead of dessert. As always, portion control is important. Since most desserts are high in carbohydrates, you need to stick with small portions. To feel satisfied and full, load up on vegetables and water and other sugar-free drinks before you begin dessert. Eat your small portion slowly and take time to enjoy it. Do you have a hard time deciding which dessert to try? Skip over the ordinary desserts that are available all year round. Pick a special holiday favorite that's only available this time of year. Still can't decide? Take a small spoonful of several different desserts. Keep it to a half a tablespoon or less, about one small bite. And don't go back for more. Another way to keep your dessert portion under control is to use a small plate and a small spoon. Even if the dessert is already cut or divided out, only place a small amount on your plate and leave the rest at the table. A smaller plate will make you feel more satisfied with, with your smaller portion. Now let's make some holiday favorites that are better for you and still taste wonderful. There are many ways to do this. You can use sugar substitutes for up to half of the sugar in most recipes. One of the members of our choir at church both she and, well, her husband has type 2 diabetes and she's pre-diabetic, and she made her cookies this year using um, Splenda. Artificial. Yeah, for, for how, and you know, at first her husband said, oh, they don't taste as good, but then he ate them. Because <laughs> they were still good. They weren't. <laughs> So I'm always you could afraid to try that stuff. I always think it doesn't have the same consistency as sugar. Well, that's what he was complaining about. They say you should use applesauce. No, I'm sweet applesauce. 
for the extra amount of liquid. Well, you can use, you can use applesauce instead of oil mm -hmm. in, yeah. in a lot of recipes. Um, the cookies that I made today, I mean, it's applesauce and bananas are, you know, what's, what's holding that together, the, um, with the oatmeal and the raisins and so. Make sure the brand that you choose is suitable for cooking. This will be on the package and the product is usually found in the baking aisle. Many stores also have pre-made desserts in their bakery section that are sugar-free. You can always substitute sugar-free instant pudding or sugar-free jello for the regular kind. Sugar-free whipped topping is also available. To keep desserts flavorful but low in sugar, you can add a variety of spices and flavorings. Reduce the amount of sugar and try cinnamon, nutmeg, vanilla, apple pie spice mix, or any other spices or extracts you enjoy. Because the spices have a strong flavor, you may not miss the sugar. And one thing about you know, sugar-free stuff, you have to you have to watch sometimes when uh, they make something sugar-free, especially like sugar-free candy. I mean, they have to make it taste good some, some way, so then they put a lot of fat in. So just because something is sugar-free doesn't actually, yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, that it's healthy. <laughs> so you have to watch how they make things sugar-free. I got the Jello, the sugar-free Jello from Walmart. Mm -hmm. Their brand. You don't even taste that it, it's sugar-free. Now I don't know what kind of sugar they use in it. What they use to sweeten it. Yeah. yeah. But you don't even taste it at all. Because my kids love it. So I make the Jello eggs at Easter time. Mm -hmm. And no one can tell. Mm -hmm. No one can tell. But when you use yeah. the Jello, the regular Jello, you can taste it right away. So what their difference is their sugars? I don't know. I never really yeah, that. sometimes you, you, you can substitute things and, and nobody can tell the difference. We accidentally, you know, for, for Christmas, we made these um, tortilla pinwheels. I don't know if you, but we accidentally bought um, the low fat uh, cream cheese that we used in the buffalo yeah. dip last, last month. And, oh, and, cool. and then I, I accidentally bought uh, fat-free sour cream, um, and we made them and took them for Christmas and as an appetizer, and nobody noticed the difference. I always use that new filter. That's how you pronounce it, I guess. Because I've, I've always been using that. Yeah. Is it, that a sugar? Is low fat? That's mm -hmm. Nut sugar, whatever it's called. Yeah. What's the, what's the name filter. of that? Yeah. I mean, Philadelphia cream cheese is the same. Um, yeah. Newfelder, however, yeah. now that's the way I pronounce it. But yeah, it was. It's got a third less, third less fat than regular cream cheese. So, and you know, mix it in with a couple other things, and mm -hmm. don't notice a difference at all. Um, heavy cream, butter, and oil are in many favorite recipes. You can make substitutions for these as well using skim milk for all or part of the cream in a recipe. Instead of butter in a pie crust, you can use oil to reduce the fat and cholesterol. Another way to reduce fat in baking is to use applesauce, um, baby food prunes, pureed pumpkin, or non-fat yogurt for half of the oil in cake, bread, or muffin recipes. There are even recipes that substitute mashed beans for the fat and brownies. Um, when my daughter worked at the University of Pennsylvania um, Center for Wheat and Eating Disorders, they had this study where they, they taught overweight teenage girls, you know, how to, um, you know, help them to lose weight, but how to cook a little differently. And they, they made pizza using a cauliflower crust. They would mash cauliflower and they would make the, the crust that, and she said you'd you can't tell, you couldn't tell the difference between the, I don't know, we, have, we haven't tried that I one. I to make crust to do so that's a make it with mashed potatoes today, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they would use low fat cheese and, and 
I'm trying to think of the dough consistency with without flour and butter. I guess. Oh, yeah, I guess I once it. once you bake it, <laughs> it was fine. Whipped cream or whipped topping? Either option is fine. Whipped topping is available in sugar-free and fat-free varieties. There are also different flavors of topping available. And the calories are minimal as long as you po your portion is small. The same is true for real whipped cream. The portion should not exceed one tablespoon. If you prefer real whipped cream over processed, go for it. But remember to keep your, your serving small. Who doesn't like chocolate sauce or warm caramel sauce? You can find sugar-free and fat-free options in most grocery stores. You can also find recipes to make at home if you like things homemade. Just drizzle a little sauce. That's enough to get that yummy taste of chocolate or caramel that you crave. We all make dip. Make your own diabetic-friendly dips by using fat-free sour cream, non-fat Greek yogurt, low-fat or fat-free cream cheese. Mix any of these with pureed fruit, a little juice, sweet spices, flavored extracts, or powdered drink flavorings. Experiment with different combinations. Find the flavors and textures you like. Offer to bring the dip when you're invited to parties and serve it with healthy dippers like fruit or small whole grain crackers. Planning is a big part of being able to enjoy desserts. Plan your day, plan your meals, plan your strategy. First, don't skip meals to try to save calories. Have your usual meals, eat them on schedule, Make sure you have protein and complex carbohydrates before consuming alcoholic drinks or desserts. Plan to fill up on vegetables and water or other calorie-free drinks before you go for dessert. Do this at home before the party. Don't ever go to the dessert table hungry. It's like, don't ever go to the grocery store hungry. <laughs> Plan your meals. When you know that you're going to have dessert, leave off some of the carb carbohydrates during the meal. The dessert will have enough carbs in it. Counting carbohydrates accurately is more important than avoiding sugar completely. Plan to share or discard part of your pre-portioned desserts. These servings tend to be large and are usually enough for two, sometimes three people. Um, when, if we go out to dinner, I mean, we'll, we'll share dessert. We, we, um, yeah, some places are huge. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, some story about that. My friend and I were going to share a piece of pie. We'll, we'll share a piece. She could tell me to take my shirt. She will make sure it's fine. <laughs> 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 Everybody thought, that's nasty. I, I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, when well, I know if there's any whipped cream on it, it's all mine. The oh, whipped cream, the whipped cream part is yours, yeah. Like it. I don't like whipped cream. That's what you say. Don't go all kiss whipped cream. <laughs> hey, what did what did Colleen call that? Some kind of something effect or? Oh, because you don't want me to scare it. I don't know. There, there's a name, like if you, if you okay. eat good. something and then, and then get sick, totally unrelated to what you ate, yeah. you, you never want to eat you that. You never eat it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> Don't eat it. So, and it's like, it's like <laughs> psychological, but uh, um, I kind of have that effect with whipped cream, <laughs> whatever that, the name of that is. Yeah. So, plan your strategy. Practice saying, no thank you. 
Say no to seconds, large servings, extra frosting, more toppings. Say no to absent-minded eating by keeping a low cal calorie drink in one hand and a napkin in the other. So make it harder to take items without thinking. Analyze your dessert choices, then pick what you want. Plan for your choice by adjusting your insulin dose or leaving off carbohydrates during your meal. One last strategy for planning ahead is to offer to bring a dessert. Take something diabetic friendly that's low in fat and sugar. There are millions of people living with diabetes and someone at the party is sure to appreciate your diabetic friendly choice as well. You've planned for it. You're ready. Here are a few more tips for that never ending dessert buffet. Don't graze. That's, that's, that's my problem. I can graze all day. Uh, analyze the desserts. Decide what you want. Put it on your small plate. Then leave the area and don't go back. Remember, this small serving is yours to have guilt-free. You picked it. You planned for it. Now all that's left is to celebrate and enjoy it. What's that? So easy said than done. Yeah. <laughs> yep. As before, if pre-cut portions are large, share or discard half of it. You can ask for smaller portions. Remember to keep your hands full with low-carb drinks to prevent you from taking extra servings. Scrape off most of the frosting from cakes. Leave a little on top and between the layers. For pies, most of the calories are in the crust. Remove at least half of the crust before digging in. Remember that you need to count the carbohydrates in any sauces and toppings that come with your dessert. Ask for them on the side or omit them completely. You can make pies with other crust. It's called the impossible pie. Do you ever have those? Impossible pumpkin Wait. pie? You put this quick in. Yeah, we, we use impossible cheeseburger pie. One time when we went camping, our scoutmaster made impossible bacon cheeseburger pie. <laughs> you don't have to skip traditional holiday drinks like punch and eggnog, but you have to count the carbs in them. You can have all the calorie-free drinks you want, just be sure that it's also sugar-free by bringing it yourself or talking to the host, hostess, or bartender. You can offer to bring a low-calorie or calorie-free option made with diet juice and sugar-free soda or flavored coffee or tea. Another way to enjoy a holiday beverage is to dilute regular punch, juice, or wine with sparkling water. You can have a warm, creamy drink by adding sugar-free flavoring or skim milk to plain tea or coffee. The flavor options are endless. We had a Christmas party at our house and we made eggnog and I used eggnog in my coffee. <laughs> Instead of having the eggnog straight, I used it like it was creamer. Alcohol is common at holiday gatherings. It's high in calories and carbohydrates. It's not a freebie. You can dilute your alcoholic drink with sparkling water. You can also leave off other carbohydrates with your meals so that you can have a drink. Remember, alcohol can interact with some medications can, and can affect your blood sugar. Typically at first alcohol will make your blood sugar go, the alcohol makes your blood sugar go down, but the things that we mix with it'll shoot it back up. So you have, yeah. So you you shouldn't ever drink like on an empty stomach. Um, make sure that you have some food in your system first. You know, so it's okay to have a drink with with a meal, but and wine, what about wine? Yeah, wine. Same thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, especially like sweeter wines. There's residual sugar that hasn't been fermented into alcohol and that that'll 
the alcohol at first drops your sugar and then the, the sugar in the wine will bring it bring it back up push it back up um, limit alcoholic drinks no more than one daily for women two daily for men when you drink alcohol check your blood sugar more often and adjust your medication as necessary talk with your health care provider before having alcohol One popular holiday favorite is eggnog. The traditional version is loaded with sugar, fat, and alcohol. It's not exactly good for diabetes. Yeah, but don't drink a quart of it. I would say just everything in moderation. Right, right. Portion control. Back to portion control. Um, many of us think of it as only once a year, and I've really got to have it. Moderation, another way of saying portion control, is the way to go. If the real thing is what you want, enjoy a shot glass full or fill a punch cup half full. Drink it slowly, enjoy it completely. Think about how it tastes, its texture, how it makes you feel and the pleasant memories it brings. Don't go back for more. The recipe this month is an alternative for eggnog that you may like. I didn't make this month's recipe. I make cookies instead. Just as Santa has elves, you could have a holiday helper. Ask someone reliable to be your dessert partner. Be accountable to each other. Encourage each other to make healthy holiday dessert choices. If you and your helper attend the same holiday parties, share the pre-portioned pre desserts. Another healthy holiday choice is to quit eating desserts completely after two or three bites and to do something active with your holiday helper. Ask others to join you for a walk outside to see the holiday lights or do some caroling. You can enjoy active games like charades or sports. Kids especially will appreciate the offer for some active fun with family and friends. You may be attending parties alone or be tempted at work. If your holiday helper is not always with you, sign a contract with each other. That's the handout with today's lecture is a, your contract. Stay accountable. Check with each other frequently. Keep a copy of your contract in a prominent place so you, you'll be reminded that the holidays are about friends, family, and fun, and not dessert. Holiday desserts don't have to destroy your blood sugar control. Check your blood sugar frequently, take your medication regularly, Move more to balance the extra calories and carbohydrates from must-have desserts. Don't let one poor choice derail you. Get back on track immediately and stay determined to make better choices. Focus on friends, family, and fun, not food. Planning ahead now helps to ensure that you'll have many more holidays to celebrate. Oops. And that's this month's. Yeah, eggnog is a holiday tradition, but it's also a diabetic nightmare. Since eggnog is mostly the same as vanilla ice cream, try this recipe with melted ice cream. It tastes great and satisfies you without sending your blood sugar into the danger zone. Eggnog still high in sugar and alcohol. It's definitely better for you than the old, f this eggnog is still full of sugar and alcohol, but it's better for you than the old fashioned kind. Remember to keep your portion small. This is a special treat. You should not have it frequently. You don't want the alcohol, if you don't want the alcohol simply omitted, you can splash, you can add a splash of vanilla flavoring or rum extract and cut the calories by, by 40 to 50 calories. Uh, 
I like my ice cream cold. <laughs> Especially better be calm. When they make eggs now, do they use, do you, the eggs are prepared differently? I mean, my mom used to make them with raw eggs, so you know, yep. supposed to do raw eggs. So they have those packaged eggs that you can use then. Pasteurized is the word I'm looking for. They like it? Because like, when I, I mean, worked at the mountain, we used to get egg, eggs all mixed up in the package, like a milk carton. When we make eggnog at home, we make it the old-fashioned way. We use real eggs. Real eggs. So now you're not supposed to eat real eggs. I know. Well, we put enough alcohol in. Or eggnog is really good. Once a year. Once a year. Yeah. It's like when you're on Weight Watchers, they too don't deny you any, yourself anything. Eat it, because if you do that, if you just deny it tonight, then one time you're going to go back and you're going to eat a whole lot of it. So if you just take a little portion at a time, it's so much yeah. better for you. We had 60, 70 people in our house on oh Sunday. Oh <laughs> um, So, you know, when you... Because they just drink and yeah. drink. Right? I said, This is my last Christmas. I can't do it anymore. You know, I, had, I always had Christmas Eve. So my one daughter, well, my daughter lives in Florida. She didn't come home, and the other, and her husband came, but my son doesn't like this. So there I had all this food. Like I had a party tray for eight people, and four of us were there. Mm -hmm. So it all got packed up today, and some's going here, and some's going there. <laughs> you know, lunch meat stuff, you can't keep it forever. Yeah. Well, we packed up a lot of stuff, and I mean, there's only three of us at home now, and we have one son that's still at home, and we packed stuff up and <laughs> froze it. Yeah. And I had baked lima beans. Nobody liked baked lima beans, so I had about six containers. Sounds good to me. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Don't have next year. Um. I don't know. Is this?